Okay, everybody, in this problem, you're driving, uh, this problem says you're driving a speed v naught when you spot a stationary moose on the road a distance d ahead. Find the expression for the magnitude of the acceleration you need if you were to stop before hitting the moose. All right, very practical problem. You don't want to hit a moose. The crazy thing about this problem is you'll notice there are no numbers here. That's fine. We're just asking for a, a symbolic expression. So let's, um, let's, let's draw a little, little picture here. This is a car. Oh, that's terrible. The car is driving along with velocity, and we have a moose here. Looks more like a camel, but you get the point. Okay, so we start at, um, so you spot the moose on the road, you're at x naught, you're traveling at v naught, it's at time naught. Um, the moose is at x1, v1, t1. So what, so what is known? Well, your first reaction is probably nothing. We have no numbers. Well, yeah, the problem says we're traveling along at some velocity v naught. So x naught will define as zero, but v naught is just v naught. The way the problem is stated, that means that is the given. V naught is v naught. It means it can be any number, but v naught is given. Okay, uh, t naught. Uh, we'll want to just define that as zero x1, we don't know that, v1, t1. Here's the thing, what is v1? Well, the car is coming, is screeching to a stop. It wants to stop before it hits the moose. So v1 we know is zero. This is physics. So where does math end and physics begins? Right here, because you know from the physical situation that the car has to stop before it hits the moose. That's what the, that's what the prompt is asking for. So this is not something that's derived or calculated. This we know just from the physics of the situation. Um, and the, the time we don't know, we want to find acceleration we want to find acceleration. That's what we're looking for. Sometimes I like to write another column and say we're seeking A. What else are we given? Well, we're given D. The distance is between this point and that point. So D is just equal to delta X, which is equal to X1 minus X naught which is equal to x1 because x0 is 0. So we are actually given x1. I will go back and call that d. Okay, makes sense? So pull out our kinematic equations. I have d, I have v0, um, which is going to be vi, the initial velocity here. Um, so, let's see, we don't have time, and we're looking for A. So this equation here gives us the final velocity, which is V1, which is zero, the initial velocity, which we have, um, and we have the distance. All right, so let's, let's use that one. Okay, so um, what can we zero out? Um, well, let's put it in terms of uh, our, our situation here. V1 equals V0 squared plus 2A X1 minus X0. <coughs> X0 equals 0. V1 equals 0. So 0 equals v naught squared plus 2a x1, but I'm going to call x1 d, to put it in terms of the given quantities. 
So if we solve in terms of our um, in terms of a, a is going to equal negative v naught squared because I'm moving that to the other side over two d, and that is our solution. So now, given this solution, no matter what initial velocity is given to us, we know we can uh, just quickly throw it into this and, and calculate the acceleration. And it makes sense that the acceleration is going to be the negative of the velocity, right? Because the acceleration is going to be in that direction.